Thousands of auto workers south of the border have launched an historic strike against the Detroit Three. United Auto Workers members walked off the job after failing to reach an agreement on a new contract with the companies. So picket lines have been set up at a GM plant in Missouri, a Ford plant in Michigan, and a Stellantis plant in Ohio. It is the first time the union has targeted all three automakers at the same time. The union demands at this point include a 40% hourly wage increase, a 32-hour work week, and the elimination of compensation tier or bans. The company offered the union double-digit pay hikes, but that wasn't enough to meet its demands. We're ready for this strike to last as long as it takes. Uh, you know, th these companies got to come to the pump for, the, for their workers. They want to call them family when it's, when, it's, when, it's, when it's easy, but you know what? The proof's in the pudding, and you know what? They haven't been there. They haven't taken care of their workers. We went backwards in the last 16 years, backwards, while the CEOs gave themselves 40% pay increases in the last four years alone. Profits have been through the roof. $250 billion in profit in the last decade. $21 billion in the first six months. The price of cars went up 30%. Our pay went up 6%. Inflation went up 19 We're going backwards, and they want to call us greedy. The strike in the U.S. comes as Canadian auto workers are also holding negotiations. Unifor represents 18,004 GM and Stellantis employees. It has selected Ford as the target of its pattern bargaining model, and that contract is set to expire on Monday night. So let's talk more about this this morning. Live this morning, Lana Payne, the national president of Unifor, is here. Lana, good to talk to you this morning. So much happening <laughs> on both sides of the border. Yes. Uh, but I want to ask specifically about this side, about why Unifor is sticking to the sort of patterning bargaining model of going after one and trying to lay the groundwork versus the uh, your counterparts south of the border who've gone after all three for the first time in history. Yeah, uh, well, we have our own strategy in Canada. We're a separate union, mm -hmm. and we make determinations with our bargaining committee, and this was uh, the approach that we chose, and we uh, feel that it'll serve us well. Uh, the, and, and partly because there were a number of really big issues that we wanted to get through, and we wanted to be able to give ourselves time to be able to do that. One being pensions, which is our number one priority in these mm -hmm. talks, and two, what occurs during the EV transition and making sure we get this right and making sure our members are protected during that process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Lana, we know that there's no strike in Canada at the moment, but how will the strike in the U.S. kind of impact or be felt here, even if Unifor is at work? Absolutely. Uh, well, the, the industry in the U.S. and Canada is very integrated, and it, it, we could get to a point, depending on what evolves in the United States, where facilities in Canada will be impacted as a result of that. Right now, the, the targets that they have chosen in the U.S. will not have an impact on Canada, but that could change depending on how this evolves. Uh, Lana, it was interesting to hear your counterpart, uh, you know, the United Auto Workers, talking about the sort of profits of the big three automakers uh, and the impact of wages on the overall bottom line. He's saying you, you could effectively double the wages of employees and really not raise the price of a car that much. How different if at all, is it on this side of the border versus the states? Because, I mean, are, are you going to be looking for 40 percent increases, 32-hour work weeks, that sort of a thing? We have our own priorities, as I mentioned. You mentioned the pensions, pensions for sure. Pensions, big yeah. priority mm -hmm. for us. Uh, our members have not seen improvements in pensions since 2007. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, th this is our priority. It comes from our membership. Wages, cost of living, these things are are commonplace, I would say to you, at every single collective bargaining table right now, not just for auto workers. That's obviously number two and a, a very important priority for our members. And then, of course, as I mentioned, what occurs during this EV transition and making sure we're protecting our members during the retooling of all of the plants, uh, which will be occurring uh, in the next uh, 18 months in Canada. But is there a wage number in mind that you're looking at? Not that I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to try to get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You notice I skipped right that's, over that. That's why I was going to follow up on We're that. We're bargaining. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so Lana, we know that Ford CEO in the state says the uh, United Auto Workers proposal could force bankruptcy. So that make it, makes it sound like they're a pretty way, far ways apart. Uh, and there's a, quite a distance between that. So how far apart are we here with Unifor and, and Ford? We, we We've rejected two offers, two economic offers from Ford, mm -hmm. uh, and we, as I've mentioned, what our priorities are, and they have, particularly around pensions, not come to where we need them to be. And uh, so we have all weekend to, to continue at this, and we're going to do that. Our job is to get the best collective agreement possible for our members, and their expectations are high. How much bargaining is going to be taking place over the next several days? Because, of course, Monday, 11.59 p.m. is every the moment, yeah. Every moment. Every moment. Yeah, we'll be at it. And what happens if you can't reach a deal? We'll by assess that by, by Monday, and uh, obviously we have to assess what's happening south of the border as well.
How would you describe, you know, overall uh, on this side of the border, you know, the auto manufacturing situation? I mean, we had, of course, the Ambassador Bridge shut down a couple of years ago during the pandemic. We kind of saw the impact there. There have been ups and downs and hiccups overall. How would you assess what's happening on this side of the border? Because even getting to make sure that there's actually work being done, whether it's GM and the situation happened in Oshawa or what's happening out at Ford, how is the situation here right now? Yeah, we have seen about $25 billion in investments since 2020 in the mm -hmm. auto industry in Canada. Uh, the footprint is growing for the first time in, in decades, which is really exciting. Uh, so it's kind of an extraordinary time to be bargaining right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, there's a lot of anxiety because when you have, uh, you know, the kind of transition that we're looking at, plants being retooled, how long will that retooling take? These are the issues that we're dealing with at the bargaining table and also making sure that our members have solid income security during that period and, the you know, they're able to retain uh, workers uh, during a down period, and mm -hmm. that's critical. Yeah. And, Lana, you know, it's been a few difficult years for the auto industry given the pandemic and, yes. of course, supply chain issues. I mean, my mother-in-law is complaining that she couldn't get her second fob key to her, <laughs> yeah. her new vehicle, and it's been over a year. So how could, you know, a potential strike hurt the auto industry even more if it does happen? I think the reality is, is that the last, as you mentioned, the last three years have been a struggle. It has caused companies to rethink what it is they do with supply chains, too. We're mm -hmm. seeing a lot more onshoring of, 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 of the supply chain. We're seeing this in Canada and the United States. And we're seeing governments supporting that, whether it's the Canadian government through, you know, a number of programs that they've introduced through their budget, but also the Biden administration has been pretty keen about bringing some of this work back to, to North America. Mm -hmm. So we're in a, a good situation there, but the reality is... People need to be able to have good wages and good jobs in this country, and, and collective bargaining is one of the ways that we achieve that. All right. It is going to be very interesting to follow what happens over the coming days. Yeah. Uh, Lana Payne, Unifor's National President. Appreciate your time here on Breakfast this Thanks morning. So Thanks much, for joining Lana. us. Thanks so much, Appreciate Thank you coming in. Okay, nice to meet you. It's Thank been you a busy day for you. I'm sure we'll be talking table. soon. Yeah. yeah. yeah.